I want you to now think what does Namrud and Uzair and Ibrahim have in common? And Namrud, for those who know, Namrud was a Babylonian king whose story was mentioned in the Quran without mentioning his name. And Uzair was mentioned in the Quran but was mentioned in relation to a story in Surah Al-Baqarah without mentioning his name. And then Ibrahim, Prophet Ibrahim, we all know. What do they have in common? They have in common the fact that in chapter 2 of the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, the longest chapter of the Quran, their stories, that of Nimrud and Uzair and Ibrahim, were mentioned one after the other. And the stories that were mentioned were mentioned in relation to the same thing. And that is life. They all looked at life and they gave their verdict and understanding. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without mentioning that, cited those ayat one after the other, three stories. And you read them without realizing why this comes after this, after what's the connection between them? Please bear with me. I will mention the three verses of that chapter in the Arabic language, in the Quranic language, and then I will translate the meaning of those ayat. But please follow me for those who know Arabic. It's how we look at that intriguing thing. While we are in the wombs of our mothers, we don't think about life. We are just developing life. While we are in Alam al dhar we don't think it's just that ruh. Now we come to the second phase and we start to look at life in front of us coming to an end, being taken away violently or peacefully or we find that life is suffering in front of us. We find that life is coming out in front of us. You know that already if the snow did not come back today to cover those crocuses. You know the crocus that started to grow out of the ground as the first flower to tell us that the spring is already here. As we see life coming back and in the fall the yellow leaves started to tell us that now life is going away but we say no but it will come back again now it's intriguing and someone who was bubbling with life tomorrow may be put under the ground six feet under with earth covering that person it's intriguing why all of that people reacted to this different ways what did an namrud think of life? He looked at himself most powerful. He can, with a move of his tongue, determine the fate of people. He can say, take the life of this person away, spare the life of this person, do this. He thought of himself as the giver of life. No different than what they thought of Wilmot. No different at all. But he thought of himself like Pharaoh, Pharaoh of Egypt. He thought that, Ana rabbukum al What are you talking about, Musa? You are saying that you want me to believe in a God other than me? I am God. And that's what happened to many people of authority who thought that they can control life they can call for war and cause the death and demise of millions of people. And we are witnessing this today. We haven't heard of a phase of human history 
where there was no war, no killing, no people violently snatching life, simply because someone or a group of people, a few people, decided that this is what they want to do. Look how we reacted to Terry Schiavo, one individual who has been in a vegetative state for 15 years. Life is, is something precious. And those who really take it must have something in them that is saying to that jinn we talked about, I am one of your ranks, or I am in your ranks, Iblis, as we will talk about the reason that God Almighty allowed Satan to live and interact with us as a challenge. Because if there's no challenge, there's no reason for us to pass through this phase of life. We could go directly home because God loves us. But God says, I'm going to let you go through phase of life number two, where things are going to be really bad and really good. And you will choose. You will have the free will. War or peace. Disease, health, you may not choose between health and disease, but there will be things that will be imposed on you and things that you will cause and things that you have no choice in. But this is life in phase number two. Now, Namrud. Alam tara ila alladhi hajja Ibrahim fi rabbihi an atahu Allahu al-mulk. أن آتاه الله الملك إذ قال إبراهيم ربي الذي يحيي ويميت قال أنا أحيي وأميت قال فإن قال إبراهيم فإن الله يأتي بالشمس من المشرق فأت بها من المغرب فبهت الذي كفر والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين نمرود أو كالذي مر على قرية وهي خاوية على عروشها قال أنا يحيي هذه الله بعد موتها شك شك فأماته الله مئة عام ثم بعثه قال كم لبثت قال لبثت يوما أو بعض يوم قال بل لبثت مئة عام فانظر إلى طعامك وشرابك لم يتسنه وانظر إلى حمارك ولنجعلك آية للناس وانظر إلى العظام كيف ننشزها ثم نكسوها لحما فلما تبين له قال أعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير نمرود الكافر عزير الذي كان عنده شك ثم آمن فلننظر إلى رمز الإيمان إبراهيم وإذ قال إبراهيم رب أرني كيف تحيي الموتى قال أولم تؤمن قال بلى ولكن ليطمئن قلبي قال فخذ أربعة من الطير فصرهن إليك ثم اجعل على كل جبل منهن جزءا ثم ادعهن يأتيك سعيا واعلم أن الله عزيز حكيم It did not say, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ as it said to Uzair. Because the ending of each ayah was relevant to the story. For النمرود, وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ For Uzair, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ For Ibrahim, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ What does it say? نمرود, with all his power, said, I can bring life to people, I can take life any time I want. And then Ibrahim said, okay, if that's your sign that you have all the power, then God brings the sun from the east side. Can you bring it from the west? So Nimrud could not answer. And he was dumbfounded. Fabuhita. He was dumbfounded. And God does not give guidance to the transgressors. And then it tells the story of Uzair, the prophet of the Israelites, where he was passing by a village that was dead. No signs of life. Its people deserted it. No vegetation, nothing. And he wondered to himself, he said, how difficult will it be? 
for God to bring life back to this dead community. So God, to show him by experiment, he made him die for 100 years. Then he brought him back to life and asked him, how long have you been dead? He said, a day or part of a day. He said, nay, you've been dead for 100 years. And I'll show you how you were dead for 100 years. And this is how time was actually, that person was taken out of the influence of time. Look at that. He, he's been dead for 100 years, but he felt that he was dead for a day or part of a day. And then he said, look at your food and drink. Nothing happened as if it was placed in the most effective freezer or fridge. Today, even in the best of fridges, if you put food for a long time, it will, you know, be spoiled. But he said, look at it. Nothing happened to it. Why? Because God Almighty took it outside of the influence of time. Time did not work on it. Time is a, something that is created by God. So God can really separate things from each other. And then he said, look at your donkey, your means of transportation, its bones. Because it's been dead for a hundred years. God let it go through time. And then when Uzair looked at that and found things in front of him, said, now I know that God has power over all things. So the non-believer, Nimrud, the suspicious prophet who wanted knowledge, and the prophet who had the ultimate faith, Ibrahim, who asked God Almighty, how, how do you bring the dead back to life? He said, take a bird or four birds and cut them into pieces. Put pieces on every hill. There are four of them. Then call them and all the pieces will rejoin. I mean, these are things that Ibrahim needed to see because he had nothing else to, to feel other than to see and experience experienced something, so he did that to him, and the birds came back to Ibrahim. So this is how intriguing life is, how people ask questions, how they interact with life in the second phase. And in interaction with the second phase, people throughout history reacted to life in different ways. Again, let us go through a list of things that we've been hearing about in relation to life. As I am mentioning every word, try to join it with life. How? Cloning. Cloning. Making copies of the same person. Genetic engineering. Determining the color of your child's eyes, that height of your child, uh, trying to have your child get lots of hair because you really, uh, uh, you know, didn't have much to start with. Uh, did you notice? None of the men laughed. It's not amusing, but they laughed because, you know, they said, <laughs> why should we care about that? No, but there are bald females, by the way. Genetic engineering. Stem cell research. To harvest organs. I need a liver to transplant to a person who has terminal liver cirrhosis or has hep C, or so I will make a human being, take the liver, throw the rest away, and use that liver. Life. Birth control. Birth control. Whenever I'm ready, I will allow pro procreation. I will allow a child to be born. It's up to me. Birth control. I want to propagate life through me, but I can't. I can't. 
I don't have enough sperm count. Or my wife doesn't have an egg that survives in that acidic medium. My sperms die on the way. I want a child. Test tube baby is the answer. But my wife has so many illnesses. She cannot even use that technology after we fertilize the egg with the sperm and in the test tube. We can't re-implant the zygote back because she can't. She has a heart condition or she has this condition or that condition. Surrogate motherhood to lease a womb. Find someone who is willing to rent her womb to have your sperm and her egg, husband and wife, to bear your child. Sometimes that leasee or the one who is leasing will give that baby back. Sometimes says, no, this is my baby. And we've heard stories about that. Cloning, genetic engineering, stem cell research, birth control, surrogate motherhood. Some people say, I um, want a child, but I'm not comfortable with a certain lifestyle. I enjoy a lifestyle. Homosexuality. Life in a certain lifestyle. Life style. Life style. Heterosexuality. Homosexuality. Euthanasia. Mercy killing. Suicide. All of these things talk about how we really reacted to life. Cloning has been considered by many in scientific circles and in other circles as the marking in human history that showed that there isn't any more one creator. That humans can create as well. As they said, Wilmot is the creator. He created Dolly. And I want to tell you that I went through the Quran and I said, what did the Quran say about cloning? Or did the Quran, which was revealed more than 1400 years ago, even knew anything about cloning. I mean, cloning is something that happened a few years back. And we know that the Quran is the eternal word of God. This is something that is not because emotionally carried by Muslims, but there are proofs in the Quran about things that explain everything. Cloning, absolutely, absolutely, it talks about cloning in the Quran because God Almighty told us that days will come when certain things will unfold and when the cloning will unfold, you should be prepared to know that God is never overwhelmed by these kind of things. I will leave you with, do you want one or two ayat? Two. I will tell you two ayat. One of them is from Surah Al-Ra'd. Ayah number 16. 
أم جعلوا لله شركاء خلقوا كخلقه فتشابه الخلق عليهم قل الله خالق كل شيء وهو الواحد القهار Or would they ascribe partners to the Almighty God who would be resumed to have or assumed to have created things similar to his creation? Nay, but creation has been mixed up in their eyes. Say that God is the sole creator. He is the one and the most powerful. The second ayah is from Surah Al-Waqi'ah that says, you really think that the creation is the final product? That you look at yourself and you say, or you look at your baby and say, this is, this is the creation of God, the baby. I'm no, 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 no. This is the product that will continue to grow. But the creation, if you want to create something, you should go back to the beginning, to that first cell. Go back to the sperm that Aristotle said has a miniature human being in it, but God Almighty says no, that sperm has the elements of life, the nucleotides, those chemicals that are in there. This is creation. This is creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَحْنُ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ فَلَوْ لَا تُصَدِّقُونَ We have created you. Would you not believe this fact? نَحْنُ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ فَلَوْ لَا تُصَدِّقُونَ أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تُمْنُونَ أَأَنْتُمْ تَخْلُقُونَهُ أَمْ نَحْنُ الْخَالِقُونَ This is the question. Consider the sperm that you produce. Did you create it or was it God Almighty who created that? Because the creation is in the sperm. It's in the egg. It's not in the final product. All that Wilmot dead, uh, did or dead, all of us will be dead. Now, uh, all he did was to take a created cell from the udder of the sheep that he took. Created cell, it's already created. And he redirected that cell to make another sheep. He did not create a new sheep. He just took it, redirected, and off it went. That's what cloning is all about. It's not creation. It's just basically to redirect something that is already created. And there are many other ayats.